Hirschsprung's disease is when a baby is born with intestines that cannot move stool throughout the body. It primarily affects the large intestine or the colon. Now, this is because part of the intestine is missing its nervous system, and those ganglion cells are missing, therefore the intestine cannot do its job properly, and the result is an inability of the bowel wall or the bowel muscles to contract, and therefore to expel the stool outside of the body. Hirschsprung is a fairly common disease, and it affects around 1 in 5,000 live births, and more common in boys. Now, 20% of these cases occur within families, indicating that there's a genetic component to this disease. Now, in Hirschsprung's disease, the ganglion cells, which constitute the nervous system of the intestines, fail to migrate to their normal spot, leading to the pathology. Now, the presentation is most common in the newborn period. The first thing that we ask the parents is if the baby passed stool or meconium in the first one to two days of life. Patients can have a mild presentation, such as abdominal distension or vomiting, or they can present with life-threatening sepsis or enterocolitis that requires an ICU stay. Hirschsprung's disease typically has an early presentation, usually in the newborn period, where babies are not able to pass stool and therefore become obstructed. The other component is a late presentation, such as toddlers or school age or even teenagers. Now, those patients typically present with chronic constipation that is refractory to the traditional bowel management treatment. They usually go to their normal GI doctor and they can't uh, go through the constipation regimen and it becomes a refractory uh, disease and they come to us afterwards. And now, diagnosing Hirschsprung's disease usually starts with a contrast enema. This is a dye study that provides the surgeon with a roadmap to the colon. Now we look for an abrupt change in the caliber of the colon and this gives us a hint that this is Hirschsprung's disease. Now the next step is confirming the diagnosis. Now we need to do a biopsy. And this can be done in one of two ways. The first one is a suction rectal biopsy, which is performed at the bedside or in the clinic. The other option is a full thickness biopsy, which is performed in the operating room if more tissue is required. Now, the pathologists then look under the microscope to look for these ganglion cells and therefore determine if the child has Hirschsprung's disease. If the child has ganglion cells, then the child does not have Hirschsprung's disease. The definitive treatment for Hirschsprung's disease is surgical, and the ultimate goal of the procedure is to remove the area of the colon that is missing those ganglion cells. And once the area is resected or removed, the normal or healthy bowel is pulled through and attached to the anal canal. We used minimally invasive and laparoscopic techniques to minimize scar tissue and therefore complications. Now, patients are usually in the hospital for an average of few days to recover from surgery. The families will receive detailed instructions on post-operative care. We will give them supplies on how to take care of their child. We have a team of physicians and nurses that will continue to follow our patients in our multidisciplinary bowel management clinic at the Johns Hopkins Children's Center.